Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today um, I'm going to be testing out some flax paper that I got from Dick Blick online. Um, I had never heard of flax paper. Typically it's just, you know, cellulose or cotton or something like that. I'm sure some of the, you know, more professional watercolorists have heard of flax paper. But I thought I'd give it a try. It was pretty decently priced. It was like $6 and it, was a, and it came in a huge sheet. It's uh, a 300 gram... So it's really thick. You can definitely feel it. It's a cold press, so it's got a nice texture to it. And uh, as you can tell from the contrast between my whiteboard and the paper, that it's got a little bit of an ivory hue to it. Now what I'm going to try to do here is I'd like to test some wet on dry, some wet on wet, and then a few different effects just to see um, how it compares to just regular cotton paper or regular cellulose paper. So I typically use, and, and it's not very well rated, but I typically use B paper. Um, a lot of times I do use Arches as well, but Arches is kind of pricey, so um, I don't, I don't know. I just, I try to stick with the B paper, but I, I don't understand why people don't like it, but pff, I like it, so that's all that matters to me. So um, anyway, but this flax paper here. So I'm going from B paper cotton to flax. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just do a little wet on dry. Um, I'm gonna put too much water to activate my stuff, but yeah. So it goes on pretty smooth. This is my neutral tint, tint from Sennelier, which I, you know, in previous videos, I'm sure you, you know that I'm pretty fond of it. However, I'm also wanting to test um, this pigment from Daniel Smith called Moon Glow, which if you're not familiar with Moon Glow, it's a really fascinating pigment. Its purpose is to granulate, and when it granulates, it spreads out all the different pigments that are in it, which is like purple and orange and just like funky, funky colors. So um, I'm going to post a painting that I did a uh, little boy blue and I used moon glow in that and you'll see what I mean but hopefully you'll see what I mean here so there's that and then um, one of my other favorite colors is cobalt blue let's do our little cobalt blue there's another pigment by Daniel Smith that does the same thing as moon glow it's called shadow violet I also use that in my little boy blue but I'll just use Moon Glow for now so you can see. Shadow Violet is also pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and try our wet on wet while that dries. So far, so good. It does seem to be kind of a thirsty paper. It's kind of sucking up my water here as I lay it down. But I know my B paper tends to really suck it up too, so see how this works. First with the neutral tint, which I know spreads. See, it spreads pretty easily. Um, Moon Glow tends to spread pretty easily as well, so let's see how this looks. No, not so much. Or maybe I'm just wrong about that. I don't know. Or maybe it's just not wet enough. Yeah, it spreads all right. It's just, you know, my, my neutral tint is such a fast spreader that it's just, you know, anyway. And my cobalt. This is just cobalt hue. It's not the actual cobalt because the color of the blue is what I care about, not, you know, authenticity of the pigment. <laughs> So far, so good. And while this dries, I'm going to go ahead and show you some different effects that um, are kind of spreading around on YouTube lately. Well, first effect, you know, most people know masking fluid. So I went ahead and put some masking fluid down. It feels pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over that. Um, the second technique I'm going to use is the etching, which, um, yeah, I'll just use a toothpick or something to to etch into the paper and, and see what happens 
And then effect number three, I'm gonna use the plastic wrap, and then effect number four, which everybody knows is salt. I'm using it last because it's so messy. So first, let's go ahead and go over our, um, I'm just gonna use neutral tint because you know, just for the sake, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna use Moon Glow, because Moon Glow is cool. All right. And I'm just gonna do one solid color over this because theoretically, it should leave the white or ivory space behind. And you can see that definitely see where I laid it down <laughs> but my purpose for doing this is just to see how easily it pulls up without destroying the paper and you know without destroying the effect or you know what I mean all right now effect number two actually I'm gonna go ahead and skip to effect number three because I don't have my toothpick over here. I'll get it in just a second. So effect number three, I'm going to do cobalt and we're going to do our plastic wrap. So you get a nice goopy wet layer down. Such a pretty blue. I love that. It's a little bit different um, on the off-white background, but it's still very pretty. All right. I've never actually done this before, but I see it all over. Let's go ahead and lay down our plastic wrap. Cut this off. All right. Let me get my toothpick real quick. So let's go ahead and etch so what this does is it's meant to um, kind of destroy the tooth of the paper in these areas so that whenever you put your your color on it's gonna make it darker in those areas it's like the opposite effect of the masking fluid Let's do a neutral tint over there, uh, you know, because that's a dark color. Let's do yellow. I got, um, this is Gamboge, I think, from Daniel Smith. See my itch. It is also possible I didn't push hard enough. But again, as with the plastic wrap, this is also a technique I've never really used because it's, to me, it's not really something that's I don't want to destroy the tooth of my paper, basically, so, um, because I work in many, 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 many layers, and I don't want to destroy the paper before I'm done painting with it. So, I don't see my etching, so, um, this is also very thick paper, so the, the possibility that I'm just not pushing hard enough is very real. Um, I'm, I'm going to do Moon Glow again, uh, for the salt effect because it's the the separation of the pigment is really prominent when you use the salt so I'd really like to see that and the and you know aside from the paper the trick with using the salt too is to make sure it's not too wet um, you want it to be kind of like glossy wet but not 
not like sopping wet because otherwise you know the the water is just gonna dissolve the salt instead of give it that kind of that starburst pattern so and then you don't want it to be too dry either Go ahead and wait for all this to dry, and I'll be right back. Okay, so for the most part, these are pretty dry, and you can see that the the salt. Oh, it's kind of dark. The salt didn't really work, um, so I thought, well, maybe oh, oh, too bright, too bright. I thought maybe um, it was just too dry. Uh, so I took another swatch and I painted um, the shadow violet on there and did some salt. And it worked, but it's not really the best effect relative to what I've seen in the past. Um, I think it has to do with the texture, like so the cold cold press texture of this in combination with how slick the surface actually is. Um, it, it's a weird conundrum because it's really thirsty paper, but it's also like hydrophobic. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so weird. So here's my shadow violet and here's my cobalt. I went ahead and tried like a, just a single pigment to see if maybe it was the multi pigment that was not making the salt work, but I mean, it works. Um, just not the same as it would on cotton paper. I also decided to retry the toothpick etching and I pressed a lot harder this time to where I actually bent, I don't know if you can see that, bent the tip of my toothpick. <laughs> so I pressed pretty hard and when I initially painted over the surface it looked like it was working but then as it dried like nothing happened. So. I mean, I can kind of see the outline of it, but it just looks like damaged paper. It doesn't really look like it's what it's supposed to. Um, another thing I noticed uh, was the the warping. So it's probably not as um, apparent on camera, but it's very warped. Uh, let's see if I can align it. I don't know. It's it's pretty warped. Um, but it could also be because I didn't tape it down, so whatever. Now the original card I had, so here's the plastic wrap effect. So now this one actually turned out pretty interesting because um, if you can see close up here, because of the texture, it kind of created these like starburst effects within. You see that it's kind of blurry but yeah so that's kind of cool I guess I, I never used the, the plastic wrap technique maybe I'll try um, wet on dry wet on wet there's really nothing notable that it just looks like it's supposed to um, with the wet on wet um, on the cobalt side which I've never seen this before um, there's a hard edge right before it spreads out. So that's that's interesting. And I don't know why it did that. Um, here's my etching, which you can see there's nothing there. Now let's see how, I'm gonna use a towel. Let's see how our masking fluid comes off. It seems to come off normal, which is good. And it doesn't, doesn't seem to be disrupting the paper or damaging the paper. So, oh, it's a booger. All right. Piece left on there. So yeah, that turned out okay. Um, and again, the salt, let's take it off so I can show you. I mean, all it did, like normally salt gives you like cool starburst patterns, but in this case, it looks like all it did was really, um, dang it, 
Let's brighten this up a little bit. All it really did was make like white spots where the salt was. It didn't really make starburst patterns or anything like that. Um, and that was on this one. On this one, it made a little bit more starbursty patterns. Um, and I, the difference between this paper and that one is I made this area more wet. So that's kind of the ironic thing too, because this would have been the perfect wetness for the salt technique. This was over wet for the salt technique. So with the flax paper, to use the salt technique, you want it to be a little bit more wet than you normally would, which is weird, but um, yeah. So this was just a fun little experiment. Um, like I said, the flax paper, I think it was like $6 for like a, you know, a pretty huge sheet. I could probably cut, you know, several pieces of regular paper out of it. Um, and I don't know, it was just kind of cool. I'd never had a 300 gram paper before. It's always been the hundred and it's always been whatever the, what is it? No, well, maybe, uh, maybe it was, no, it's 300 pound. I'm sorry, it's not gram. I usually use 300 gram, not 300 pound. <laughs> Sorry about that, my mistake. Um, but anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the interesting little test that I had here on flax paper. Um, I'm not really entirely sure what part of the flax plant they're using. I'm assuming it's the fibers and not the seeds. But um, yeah, so uh, again, just as a recap, it's a little bit more ivory than white, so keep that in mind if you decide you want to try flax paper and you want to paint on it. Your pigments are probably going to take on a little bit more of an ivory hue than just a, the brilliant white that on normal paper. Um, masking fluid seems to work just fine. Um, the plastic wrap um, kind of gives it a little bit of a different effect, but it still works. Salt, you have to keep it a little bit wetter than you normally would. Um, forget about the etching technique because it doesn't work. And wet on dry, wet on wet, they all seem to work just fine. My spreadability happened just like I expected it to with all the pigments except for the cobalt, which could have been just a fluke on my part. I'm not really sure. But um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this little experiment um, of mine and I'll see you next time. Bye.